Yep. Okay, good. Um, well, awesome. Thanks. Uh, Chelsea, our company president, is here as well. Chelsea is uh, somewhere in the group of people down there. Um, so uh, Point of Home Essentials, uh, we have uh, five employees, full-time employees, uh, based on the Pono Home Essentials line. And so we are creating a, um, basically a circular economy model for personal care and cleaning products. So we started with shampoo and conditioner and then uh, have grown into sunscreen, lip balm, uh, lotions, uh, hand soaps, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now we have a cleaning spray, um, a whole bunch of other things, room deodorizer, that sort of thing. And the idea is that you have uh, a bottle and that bottle can be reused. And so what we do is we pay people a dollar when they return the bottles to us and then we clean and sanitize them. So I'm just going to kind of go through um, our slides and Chelsea will chime in uh, as she sees fit. Please, Chelsea, go ahead and interrupt at any moment and um, anything else that you want to add, please do. Um, so zero waste, uh, in our view, uh, we, we share this concept of not making the perfect the enemy of the good uh, in that zero waste is like this ideal and to get to it is very challenging. So we want to help people start right where they are uh, and not try to get to perfect right away, but just to take some baby steps along the way. And so first, we'd rather have, as many people said, millions of people doing zero waste imperfectly versus 100 of us doing it perfectly. And it's way important, way more important to reach the masses with this. So we called our product line Pono Home Essentials. Our company has been called Pono Home for six years. Uh, Pono Home does energy efficiency for homes. And so we, we actually go into homes and help them be more energy efficient, water efficient, cut their utility bills, cut their carbon emissions, that sort of thing. And we have a six year history of doing that. We have greened over 13,000 homes across the state of Hawaii. Uh, and we've had massive impacts in terms of carbon emissions and that sort of thing. Two years ago, kind of listening to what our customers wanted, we launched this essentials line, Pono Home Essentials, to basically fill that need to take their home to the next level of greenery. Um, so cool that they do energy efficiency, cool that they do water efficiency, we fix the toilet leaks, that sort of thing. Um, but their personal care products are still toxic, coming in a single use plastic bottle, coming from thousands of miles away, so many challenges. So our product line is an essentials line. It is uh, not a luxury line. It is, we try to keep it very affordable for everybody and try to price match. Um, it's organic, locally made. Uh, most of our products are made either on the Big Island or here on Oahu. We fill the bottles here on Oahu and we sell them. And then when you guys are done with them, we take them back and then we clean, sterilize and refill those bottles and sell them again. So that is how we look at sort of a zero waste ecosystem and how we're looking to try and solve that problem. Sorry, slides. Jumped ahead there. So, so here's kind of the, the, the difference between what a linear economy is versus a reuse economy versus this truly circular economy. A linear economy takes raw materials and goes down the chain. You take, you make, and then you, and then you waste. So it really just goes straight down the line. Uh, raw materials, a piece of wood, some oil gets used one time, gets turned into a product, then gets thrown in the trash. The reuse economy is focused around recycling, which is good. It's not a, not a terrible thing, but products are made. Then at the end of a useful product's life, you can take this glass bottle and throw it in your recycle bin. It can get recycled. Um, most of the time it does not uh, become a functional product unless it is a high value recycled item. So aluminum is high value, cardboard is high value. There are a number of other things that are high value, but the market for um, uh, plastic in particular is pretty junk when it comes to recycled plastic. So even before China stopped taking all of our um, plastic, only 9% of all plastic worldwide was actually getting recycled. So now the figure is probably a lot lower. So the reuse economy around recycling is not necessarily the best option. So we envision a truly circular economy where we sell you this bottle, you use this bottle and then you give this bottle back to us. And instead of breaking it down, melting it, and then reforming it and pouring it into something useful again, we simply sterilize it and use it again. It's a way less carbon intensive, way less energy intensive, way less waste intensive model for creating a circular economy. 
most people on this webinar, I'm gonna guess, are uh, too young to remember this, but when I was a child, we had a milkman model where milkmen would literally come to our house and drop off a glass bottle of milk and we would put out the empty glass bottle and they would take it back and we'd get a deposit back on it. We'd drink the milk during the week and then the next week we'd put the glass bottle out. That was how it was when I was a very young child. Um, this, we're, we're bringing this back just like all you know, cool fashion comes in, in cycles. We're bringing this back and making it cool again. This is effectively just the milkman model. So that's what we envision as um, uh, a circular econ a truly circular economy model. Um, I have a little graphic I'm gonna try and share here on exactly how this works, but basically we ship boxes through the mail. Uh, when people get their boxes with full products, they can take the full products out. You can take the pump, so a pump like this can be taken off, put into a bottle that we send a replacement with just a cap. And so people reuse their pumps after cleaning and sterilizing them. They took take the cap and they put it on the empty, put it right back in the exact same box and it ships back directly to us. And then we pay the deposits back, we pay the return shipping, and then uh, we take all that stuff and reuse it. So I'll try and share that graphic here in a second as well. Um, here's some great zero waste tips. And again, Chelsea, if you wanna chime in on some of this stuff, there's so many good stuff, uh, good ideas around getting to more zero waste. Um, this is not something that uh, I won't spend too much time on in this webinar, uh, but happy that we could go down many, many rabbit holes. So, um, Chelsea, do you want to chime in a little bit? And I do, yes. So, um, some of the things that we offer are th just looking at daily activities. You know, I, you see a lot of people that have reusable water bottles, reusable bamboo and metal, and eating utensils. Um, something that we offer is like home cleaning. So um, some, some tips you can do is using cloth rags instead of paper towel. Um, and this is a really great cleaner that I love. It smells like lemon. Um, and then uh, just to give you an idea of the um, great description that Scott provided about the Milkman bottle. So this is, um, these are our conditioners that you would get in the mail. Um, has the pump that you can reuse. Um, and then there are other things that you can do just in daily life like I, I talked about the um, reusable bamboo and eating utensils. Um, and then instead of using like plastic wrap over your, um, over your food, you can use maybe wax wrap instead that um, you can wipe off, wash, reuse again. So um, the, the list goes on and on. You can use um, some of your food waste for composting, um, instead of buying new clothes, you can thrift shop or have my favorite um, clothing swap with your friends. Um, so, so there are a lot of different options that we have, and I think this is a great platform to be able to, to share those kinds of things. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Charles. Um, so we at Pono Home Essentials, we're looking at things in terms of how do we get as a society to a place where we have this truly circular economy. And our argument from the beginning has always been, don't make the perfect the enemy of the good. Just get started going on a journey, knowing that no one is perfect, that our economy was built on cheap plastic, cheap oil, and that sort of thing. And so our whole system is set up to be very difficult for people to actually get to a zero waste life. So doing your best incrementally, getting better every day, um, incorporating some of those tips that Chelsea was just talking about, great way to do it and start getting practice with those things one at a time and eventually it becomes second nature and that's great. That's what we need is millions of people starting to do this and just starting a journey and knowing that it's a journey, that, it's, that there is no end point, there is no perfect, we'll just keep going and getting better and better and better. So we're really looking as a company to try and balance this, this reach that we have uh, and the impact with feasibility. It really is like a logistical challenge to ship products, receive them, clean them, sterilize them, process things, fill stuff, making sure that we're sourcing all organic, locally, locally sourced ingredients and that sort of thing. We're, we're doing the best that we can, but just understand that zero waste is not an overnight process. It's gonna take some time to, to kind of grow. That's all I got. I'll go ahead and share this uh, graphic here. This is how we do our zero waste Easy as one, two, three. So you see there we have the bottle with the pump and the bottle with the cap on it. So the idea is that we sell on our website, we sell this thing called a Noah's Ark model, which is two of everything. 
So you get one with a pump and one with the cap. And so when you're out of the one that has the pump, you just swap it onto your backup with the cap on it, put the cap on the empty, and then the cap on the empty goes into that box. <laughs> you can even see the prepaid shipping label that's already on the box. Um, it comes back to us and we pay you a dollar for every bottle that we give back. Super simple. I just muted Lori with the dog. <laughs> um, okay, awesome, Scott. Chelsea, do you have anything additional that you want to share from Pono Home Essentials? Thank you, I do. Um, so kind of going back to the slide where we look at the, the, the linear economy, the reuse economy, and the circular economy. So on a global scale, circular economy is something where we look at um, the, the entire like crate grave process. And Develop that from the sourcing of raw materials down to um, the, the disposal of, of that product after it um, ends its life. So the circular economy looks at ways in which we can go into the system and, um, and we can reuse the design these products to be reused and to produce waste. So that's what we're working towards with the Ponom Essentials model. And if other companies can get on board as well, we could have a circular economy globally. So that, that's really what we're looking to jumpstart. Awesome. Well, I'm so grateful that Pono Home Essentials um, started. I thought it was a brilliant idea when Scott told me and um, it's been cool to see it going and I will vouch for the product myself that I love um, the product. It smells really good. It's locally made and it makes my hair really soft. So I really love the hair products, um, and there's a whole line of other stuff too. So highly recommend um, trying it out. And it's cool to, when you finish your bottles, that you can return them back to a local company who's just gonna refill them and not have to like mail and process. So I also know that there's a lot of like national stuff. So before we go into like a group q and I wanted to know what your, what Pono Home Essentials like thoughts were on like the loop. Like there's the loop store where these huge corporations are joining in and offering things and zero waste materials, but obviously that's on a global market. So what are your thoughts on that? I know there's like a lot of positive feedback, but also a lot of skepticism about that program. It's a great question. Uh, it's, I, I think there's a ton of room in this market for all sorts of solutions. And so I fully support uh, what they're doing and they're, they're piloting it out in a couple of cities. And so that's cool. Um, it's, it will help reach, I think, middle America because their products are tied and you know, whatever it that, you know, you can order just the usual, uh, what we refer to as the toxic product uh, inventory. You can, you can order anything toxic you want through it. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, but, but basically, yeah, I mean, the, anything that we can do to get to a zero waste system, I'm fully supportive of. I think there's niches uh, that, that every company can kind of fill. Um, our system is a direct to consumer into the mailbox. We're sort of like, tapping into the convenience that a lot of people have gotten used to buying a lot of things on Amazon. And the fact that you can reuse our box, you can reuse our packaging that goes in the box, um, the bottles themselves, everything that gets reused, like we're, we're really trying to holistically think about this uh, from, from that perspective. We do ship on the mainland out of our Las Vegas office uh, and we ship across the state of Hawaii from Honolulu. So we don't ship over an ocean just because there's too much of a carbon footprint. So we do have the lower 48 covered as well as Hawaii. Um, and I guess uh, the, the other big um, sort of key takeaway is that there will be a, a real need for in-person stores as well. So I think a lot of people are going to want to just kind of do their own and, and go and refill stuff of their own. And that, that gets to a, a nice segue for our other speaker that I, that I definitely want to give some time to. Um, but uh, one last thing I do want to mention is that we are supporting Surfrider as well. So um, if anybody goes to our website, ponohomeessentials.com and makes any kind of a purchase, enter discount code SURFRIDER. Uh, I, let me pull up the actual discount code. I think it might be SURFRIDER Hawaii. <laughs> I'll pull that up and I'll get that for I you. I just but used SURFRIDER the other day, so SURFRIDER. <laughs> SURFRIDER, okay, good, just SURFRIDER. Yep, um, so, okay, good, thank you, Chelsea. <laughs> so you get 5% off everything in our store, plus SURFRIDER makes 5%. So we are giving a uh, matching donation uh, to both you and to Surfrider to help support the great and important work that Surfrider is doing. So I wanted to send out a mahalo to, to DeRay for partnering with us on this. Awesome. Thank you so much. I want to open it up. We, um, yeah, we have five to 10 more minutes to talk about Pono Home Essentials. So 
Um, if you have a question in the group, feel free to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask and or add it in the chat. So I'll give some time for that. Okay, yeah, I have a question for you, um, Scott. Um, well, thanks for the for the great talk. And um, you were talking about the milkman model, which, which you're kind of doing for your essential line. Um, and I would love to see something like that for water bottles, kind of like the same system, but just cleaning glass bottles. Because if we think about the location we're in Hawaii and just shipping shipping glass off the islands, it's just not sustainable. Um, do you think, just from your experience from washing your own bottles and sterilizing, do you think that's economically um, feasible to have something like that for water bottles? Or what do you think are the biggest obstacles for that kind of process, speaking from your ex experience and what hurdles you went through with that program? Uh, great question, Natalie. Thank you. I, I think the, um, the main challenge with that is the price point is going to have to be pretty low. Uh, people are used to paying a buck for a bottle of water and uh, I don't know that they're going to pay much more than that and it's just it's still labor intensive for us to clean and sterilize these bottles we haven't figured out a mass way of doing it to bring the cost way down We're, we are working on that um, but I, I can't see it being economically viable to sell water in glass reuse just with the amount of labor and then the fact that some of the glass bottles are going to break um, I think you're just looking at the, the cost you'd have to charge for that bottle of water would be excessively high and probably cost prohibitive for a lot of people. I love the concept. Um, I uh, did see once upon a time in another country a water bottle refilling station that sold reusable water bottles, aluminum uh, water bottles. And so you could actually get a reusable water bottle, get it filled, and it had a, a QR code on it that you could scan for like 10 more fills at these like filter stations that they were putting all over the city. Um, so that was really neat. I have no idea if that company is still in business, but I could see that being a really nice method of doing that. And I could see putting those all over Waikiki and allowing people to buy a reusable bottle while they're on vacation and then fill it up 10, 15, 20 times or paying a quarter to fill it up or something like that. That I could see for sure. I will share that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff like that going on on a small scale. Like, so for example, Sky Kombucha, I always like to give them a shout out because they're one of the, I think probably the only beverage company in Hawaii that you, they have a deposit on their bottle. It used to be 50 cents. I think it's 25 cents now, but high incentive to bring it back. Um, and then you bring it back, you get like a dollar if it's four bottles or whatnot. And then they actually bring it back to their facility in Waimanalo, sterilize the glass and then reuse them. So they just need to get new lids, which are metal. Um, and so they're really trying that circular model and um, they've been really successful with it because glass is so reusable. It's actually also like one of the worst things to recycle in Hawaii. So it's great if a company locally can reuse it, which is awesome. So glass, metal, and Something a lot of our groups have been talking about is um, modeling this beer um, because beer comes at a high price. And in Oregon, they were able to successfully pilot a reuse program where all the local breweries participate and it's a thick glass bottle. And there's a, I don't know who runs it exactly, but basically there's a facility that cleans it. They just all have to agree to use the same thick glass. And um, they're able to, yeah, not have to get virgin glass materials imported and exported, which is a huge um, relief on the environment. So that there's been conversation around that. If anyone's particularly interested in helping do some research and support that effort, um, we love to maybe write some grants or try to look into a project like that with brewery specifically because beer is a more expensive product than water. So yeah, great question, Natalie. Any other questions from the group? Oh, Amy, Aloha, Scott and Chelsea. You may have seen coffee cup reuse companies in other countries. Um, bring them back. Have you considered something like that for here in Hawaii? Okay, yeah. So that's, Scott a, that's a great question, Amy. Um, something that uh, we've really realized that uh, you know it's a it's a kakao effort if we can partner with um with like sky kombucha or um, commercial dishwashing facilities i think that really will go a long way in terms of um 
in terms of develop, developing those models that where we can wash and sanitize these products. So I think that that's a really great start to be partnering with these different organizations that are that are doing those things so that we can create a culture and a system for, for that zero waste um, practices to be happening across different companies and different industries. One other, th one other thing I would love to add to that too is that um, the concept of running a business that is a zero waste business is uh, it's more of a logistics challenge than anything else. And we have done it. We have gone through the logistics on this. It's been a two-year process of developing this milkman model. And uh, this is an expertise that now we can share with other companies looking to do this sort of thing. And there is nothing that brings me more joy uh, than helping people start uh, green companies. I've, I've literally written a book on it. <laughs> so, um, so if people are interested in doing coffee or water or kombucha or anything like this, um, definitely just reach out to me and we can have this conversation. Awesome. I also wanted to share that Surfrider, along with Zero Waste Oahu and Kokoa Hawaii Foundation, um, have co-written a grant that would allow for a pilot of a zero waste um, program, which would be called full cycle takeout. So if we were awarded the grant, the concept is that restaurants could um, use the service and it's basically reusable takeout containers that are like standard sizes. And then um, at the, so like at a food truck court, for example, any, everyone who visits could use um, the reusable takeout containers instead of the styrofoam or disposable and then leave it on site and then this company or group of organizations um, would create a system where we collect, use a commercial dishwasher and then return back to the businesses in their morning for their next day of operation. So it, it's basically businesses are allowed to outsource the washing and all of the reusable, reusable systems to another group. Um, so that's one of the other ideas in the works, but it's great that Scott and Chelsea, you guys are working on a um, solution for cleaning products, body products, beauty products. I think all of that stuff is things that we use every day that most people don't really think very deeply about what it is and what the packaging is. So um, that's awesome. Okay, we have time for there's another question here. How do you recycle bottles you can't clean anymore or are damaged? Okay, you're answering them live. We use them as many times as we can and then recycle them. So aluminum and glass bottles only. So how many uses would you say you can um, get through for one of the metal bottles, Scott? It depends on how people use them. So uh, sometimes one use is all we get out of them if they come back super damaged. <laughs> so the better you can take care of the bottles, the Pono Home Essential bottles, uh, the more times we will get uses out of them. So uh, that's, that's all I can say. Some of them, people drop their shampoo in the shower and it dents the bottom really badly and then it makes it really hard to sterilize it. Um, the neck in particular where the cap fits on, um, if people damage that and we can't um, screw on a new cap, then they're just done. But they are aluminum, so they just go right into the recycle bin. And aluminum is a high value recycled product. Um, so most of our bottles are aluminum, and then we do have our smaller ones are glass. So they are recyclable. Do you want to answer the shipping question here? Do you ship to other states? Yes, we do. We ship to the lower 48 um, from Nevada. So we, we have a manufacturing facility in Nevada that makes our, our products there as well. And so we ship from there to the lower 48 and uh, receive bottles back in Nevada. So that is all ground shipping. And, uh, and so we, um, yeah, we, we, we do support that 100%. There are products that we sell here in Hawaii that we do not sell on the mainland. And there are products that we sell on the mainland that we do not sell uh, in Hawaii yet, but we are working as a company to consolidate them and have like a full line that is the same on both sides. Um, so yeah, thank you, great question. Um, and again, uh, shipping is, is $7 flat rate anywhere. Um, if uh, the purchase is over $100, shipping is free. And then we have a subscription where you can sign up for a monthly box and every other month box or every third month box. And then shipping is always free. And the idea is that is 100% customizable. One month you might need more deodorant, shampoo. The next month you might need lotion or sunscreen. You can drag and drop things into your box and change the box every time. And we give it up to about a 25% discount off all of our products. And you can use the Surfrider discount to get an additional 
Um, so if you want to do a subscription, that is the easiest way because then you get a box on a regular basis with custom products. You take your empties, you stick them in there, you send that box back to us. It just becomes a true circular model. So on our website, look for the subscription option. Um, right now it's pay up front. We are looking to figure out a way to pay every month. However, there is no cost to cancel. If you cancel, no problem. We refund whatever was not used. So if you, if you buy for a year, once a quarter, then uh, if, if at some point you need to cancel, we just cancel it and refund the balance of what's left. So no cancellation fee on that. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. And then the ambassador question, I do wanna talk very briefly about that. Again, I wanna give plenty of time to Lori as well for, for conversation. Um, so we, we do, we actually do have an ambassador program for people who have a big instant Instagram uh, following or something like that. We do kind of the same thing that we do at Surfrider. It's a five, five. All you have to do is post some pictures on your Instagram doing your thing and say, use discount code Scott Cooney. And then Scott Cooney would make 5% as the brand ambassador and the customer gets 5% off as well. It's a great way to share the zero waste love and, and spread uh, what we're doing. Are you planning on offering your products in bulk in the future? For example, at Lori's store, we can bring our old bottle and refill the bottle and then you don't have to sterilize. That's a good question. Lori, let's talk. <laughs> yeah, I think people want physical um, solutions. So that's a perfect segue. We're right at 1230. Um, so Lori Malini, um, I met at the World Conservation Congress and she's an awesome environmental activist, was huge in um, supporting a lot of the great environmental bills that went through the legislature, especially around waste and plastic, and has the amazing motivation to open a brick and mortar zero waste store, which is no small feat. And um, I think was gonna plan it, gonna plan to open it um, pretty soon. Now, obviously things are changing pretty quickly. So Lori, if you, I'd love if you introduce yourself, talk about your store and that whole concept so people can get into the know. I'm unmuted. I put the poodle up, so no barking. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, thanks to Ray for having me. My name is Lori Molini, and I own Protea Zero Waste Store. Um, like I said, thanks to Surfrider for putting this webinar on, and I have to say I'm super stoked to be alongside Pono Home Essential. You know, from my knowledge, they are really the first ones to bring a zero waste concept and reusable bottles to beauty and home products here in Hawaii, so that is definitely a huge feat. Um, and I do look forward to carrying their products in my store. So I'm very, very excited for that. Um, supporting local is number one. And I as well know their products are very, very good. So very excited for that. Um, I did want to take this webinar to take it a little bit more personal and talk about Protea, the process of opening a zero waste store and some of the struggles and challenges that have come along with that. I know there was some interest at the zero waste um, Oahu but convention that we had here. So I'll talk about that. And then, you know, a little on changing the system and how we consume and then share some of my basic principles for a sustainable lifestyle. Um, I'll start with a little background about me. I have been living in Hawaii for going on five years now and graduated from HPU, Hawaii Pacific University with a bachelor's in environmental studies. Um, I focused a lot of my studies on the impacts of over tourism, which was a big passion of mine and kind of veered off to focus on pushing legislation up at the state capitol and focusing on bills relating to waste and recycling for Sierra Club. And uh, that was about the time I kind of came up with the idea or at least had the courage to follow through with the idea for starting a zero waste store because it definitely is <laughs> a big undertaking. Um, but, but very, very rewarding. Um, you know, since I was a little girl, I've always been super passionate about rocks and I know my mom's on here. She sees me, so she's probably nodding and camping and nature and, you know, always wanting to save the environment or even little things like saving the wrapping paper at Christmas as a little girl. And those passions I had then stayed with me, you know, pretty much my whole life and, um, arriving in Hawaii and, really seeing the effects of plastic pollution on our beaches really opened my eyes to like an incredibly large and real problem that I felt I needed and could take action on. Um, 
so yeah, like one day I was just in my house with one of my girlfriends talking and I was getting ready to throw away one of those laundry detergent, huge plastic containers or dish soap or something along those lines. And, you know, I had a thought that continuously comes up every time I throw one of those containers away. And it's just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that we throw these containers away all the time. I throw it away, you throw it away, not even just laundry. We have tons of plastic containers and not to mention that plastic is extremely durable. It's large and totally reusable. And so I always wish that I could just take that and refill it somewhere. And, um, and you know, that process of just refilling the container makes so much sense. So, you know, that day I just decided to kind of go for it. And um, I realized there was definitely a need for that business and that not the people wanted it and the environment definitely needed it. Um, and so that was back in about 2018. And here I am about a year and a half later trying to open the, the first zero waste store in here in Hawaii. So it's super exciting. Um, yeah, like you said, Jure, we were going to open this month, especially around Earth Day. And, you know, it's unfortunate everything that's going on. But luckily, I'm hoping that we can open end of May. We are actually deemed essential. So once everything's ready, I'm going to do my best to at least get pickup orders going, um, deliveries going, getting the store completely set up. So May should be it. So that is going to be here in Kailua. Um, so a little bit about Pratea. Pratea is currently an online store and we were selling at markets before this. Um, in opening a brick and mortar, like I said, here in Kailua next month, we specialize in refillable natural beauty and cleaning products. So you can bring your own containers, fill up, which I highly recommend, like save those containers, wash those containers, get those containers ready to fill up because they are perfect. Um, and you can fill them up with a wide variety of products. So shampoo, conditioner, face wash, essential oils, deodorant, anything from cleaning products. We have machine dish soap, we have laundry soap, hand soap, we have all of it. Like we have such an amazing wide variety. I have a storage unit right now with like 20, 55 gallon barrels of liquid, like ready to fill your bottles up with. So um, all kinds of products. And aside from the refillables, we also have zero waste lifestyle items. So these items just kind of help you reduce waste in your life. I know Chelsea was mentioning some of those, like the beeswax wraps and the bowl covers and bamboo utensils, things along the lines. But for me, my, the reason I started Protea was definitely for the refillables. That is definitely our focus and where I feel like we definitely shine in is, is the refillables. So that's that. Um, some of my goals that I kind of had for Protea are, you know, reduce plastic waste and waste in general. I am super passionate about supplying natural beauty and cleaning products so we can eliminate these unnecessary toxins from our daily lives. Everything, everything we put on our hair, our skin, we clean our homes with, all those things that we're typically buying, like an average person in America is buying, are full of toxins. And I genuinely believe that that's what creates a lot of our diseases, a lot of our sicknesses later on in life. It's a little bit every single day. So that was a huge goal of mine is really getting quality, natural um, products out for everyone. Um, what else? And, uh, oh, yeah, supporting local, local businesses like Pono Home Essentials, you know, lifting up our community. Luckily, here in Hawaii, we have a lot of amazing companies selling really good quality products. So I am very lucky to be surrounded with that and being able to support and uplift other people as well. And with the store, I'm hoping to inspire People at home who want to make products or different kind of things. I've already had a lady in Kailua make this amazing uh, reusable kitchen sponge for me. So I'm super stoked to start sourcing locally from that. So I'm hoping to inspire people's creativities and um, give them an outlet for their uh, products. So those are definitely the goals that I've had in mind since starting this. Um, when I first decided to open the store, I know in Europe, the zero waste refill stores are pretty popular, especially with food products. Um, but in, and on the mainland at that time, I would say there was about five or so stores. And here about a year and a half later, now that I'm ready to open, I would say there's, there's gotta be over like 20 stores on the mainland, so, which is super exciting. So the movement is there, the demand is happening, which gives me a lot more confidence in opening the store here in Hawaii because they're, they're popping up all over the mainland. So that's very, very exciting. And I'm hoping to 
inspire and also lead the way for that here in Hawaii for other stores on other parts of the islands, other islands. Um, so yeah, um, I knew that, you know, starting a zero waste store would definitely come with its challenges. I know a lot of people have asked like, you know, what are some of the challenges you face? And, you know, zero waste refill stores, especially with beauty and cleaning products are still a very fairly new concept in how we consume product. And so that's a challenge. And then even more so being that we're on an island in the middle of the ocean and there's not a place that manufactures large quantity of bulk cleaning products. So the beauty product side, like I said before, I wasn't too concerned about because I knew that a lot of local companies make amazing beauty products. I knew I could source. So it was really more figuring out um, cleaning products because I'm, I'm pretty picky about what I sell. Everything I sell, I use in my home. I love to tell people that. Um, and I never really plan to focus on food. It's not really my expertise. And I'm like trying to stay away from Department of Health as much as possible. So <laughs> um, yeah, so beauty products and cleaning products are the number one. Um, I think, you know, some of the challenges that I face as well is like learning how to even start a business. <laughs> I didn't, you know, that is a challenge within itself, um, kind of teaching yourself every little step and knowing that even I didn't have knowledge before this of how to start a business. So I really do want to inspire people that if you do have an idea or you do have something like it's very doable, it's a lot of work and, and figuring it out, but it's challenging, but definitely doable. So if you don't have to have some kind of background on how to start a business um, to, to be able to do so. But you know, you learn every step as you go and you make mistakes and you learn from those and you have some wins and those feel great. And it just kind of repeats that cycle. Um, I would say another, another challenge for me was finding vendors that sell the products I want <laughs> and products that really work good and in bulk with reasonable pricing. And I, like, um, Scott kind of said, I'm very picky on companies. Like I want to know the ethics. I want to know that I can be confident in supporting this company. And a lot of the larger companies are, don't have the best ethics and aren't companies I would want to support. So really finding those businesses that align with my values and, you know, having them sell in bulk and all of that was definitely a challenge, but I found my good, my people. So I'm very excited. Um, and another thing that was definitely hard with starting a zero waste store was like figuring out shipping, right? Like we're on an Island in the middle of the ocean and I'm buying in 55 gallon barrels. Um, so I'm having to figure out how to get these, 55 gallon barrels that weigh 500 pounds from the vendor to the coast of LA, get them shipped over to Hawaii, you know, how to handle even a barrel of 500 pounds and, and move that and get the liquids from the barrels and figuring out how to get them in the store and figuring out that whole process has really been challenging, but um, definitely fun figuring, figuring out. Um, and definitely trying, like we all know, trying to, open the store during the times of a global pandemic <laughs> has definitely been untimely and unfortunate but it is what it is and it's definitely scary but i know that even with a pandemic we still need to do what we can to reduce waste so i'm very confident that um protea is still relevant and will make a big impact in the community and i have faith in my customers that they really want to reduce their waste and do what they can even during these times, you know, to protect our environment because that doesn't just get pushed aside. So I'm in it, like I'm already in it. So I have to keep going and, you know, navigate my way through uh, changing society. But I'm, I'm just, I'm confident. I'm confident in the vision. I'm confident in the mission. I'm confident in my customers. And I just, I know it's, it's what we need. So I'm, I'm still super stoked and don't feel too heavy with everything that's going on about opening Protea. So um, some of the, I want to talk about some of the mental challenges that I've had even opening the store, you know, starting a business is not zero waste. <laughs> and I've had a lot of stuff that I had to buy. I mean, in a, in a perfect world, I'd be able to use everything reusable and, and not use any kind of plastic in the store and these things, but you know, we have to be realistic as well and look at the big picture. So even just preparing for the store has come along with like a lot of waste, my barrels, 55 gallon barrels coming with plastic. I mean, coming with liquids are plastic and, you know, you can go on and on, but 
I always try to remember and like take a step back and look at the bigger picture and know that we are definitely reducing the amount of single use plastic that we throw away by large. And we're like, we're here to change habits, you know, and, and change the system and of how we consume product. And I always, heard, I always remember, and this was like a thought that like came to me and was like, boom, like you cannot consume without creating waste, right? So you consume, you generate waste. So it's really about managing that waste in a responsible manner, minimizing that waste as much as possible and, you know, trying to figure out how we can get the most product out to people with the minimal amount of waste being produced. So it's definitely trying to figure that out all the time and not beating myself up and seeing the bigger picture and, and like Scott has said before, and I'll probably repeat this later on, you know, zero waste isn't about being perfect. It's about changing habits, about changing a system, about, um, you know, doing what you can. So um, with a lot of my vendors, I've been able to create kind of like Scott, like a closed loop cycle where we clean and reuse some of the same containers back and forth, which is very exciting. And I'm trying to work on doing that with more of the vendors. If I could do that, you know, I say if I could do that with some of the 55 gallon barrels, but you know, I'm shipping those back and forth. So then you got to weigh the, weigh the pros and cons, but I've had a ton of people reach out to me for end users for the 55 gallon barrels. So if it's, they're going to be their water catchment system or agricultural uses, I've had a lot of people. So, you know, it's just a constant like brainstorm to keep improving in these areas and making sure our footprint is as small as possible and always remembering the big picture, right? Like, changing the system, changing habits. So I tried to not nitpick myself in little areas that I am can producing more waste than I would have if I didn't even open a store. So, um, you know, and, and like I said, changing the system is kind of something I want to talk about. And a, a point I really brought up in a lot of the uh, Bill 50 hearings about um, 50, right? Oh my gosh, it's been 40. so long. <laughs> 40, my gosh, <laughs> that's where I'm at. 40 hearings is... Um, you know, we're uh, trying to change a system like these, I realize, you know, we can't wait around for these large companies to start making these changes that we urgently need to see large companies and industries take so long and so slow to make the urgent changes that we need, you know, and with climate change and environmental destruction happening at the rate that it is, it's like, we don't have any more time to wait around and do those pilot projects. Like I support that. And so be it, but like, I, sometimes it's just, it's a pilot project. How long will it take them to really implement something that we need on that level? You know, so that's kind of why I took it in my own hands. And then there's a lot of the time to mention like the changes they make aren't enough. You know, there's a lot of greenwashing in the market nowadays. And a lot of companies are doing bare minimum and advertising it as some, you know, big eco revolution and getting away with it, you know, making people feel good about their consumption, even though they're still producing large amounts of waste and extremely destructive to the environment. So that's kind of why I decided to take this into my own hands and change the system that's been around for decades and is no longer working. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's so important. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm stoked to give people the opportunity, the opportunity to do what they can give back, make these changes in their lives and their communities and doing their part in reducing waste. You know, you have to give people the opportunity if there's nowhere that they can refill their bottles or there's no, companies that will send them the bottles it's like they don't have that opportunity so it's really just providing the opportunity to allow people to step up and do their part um so hey, I'm Lori, I, wanted, for that. I wanted to ask um where exactly this store will be in um yeah if you have a grand opening or something people can look forward yeah to. yeah so the store is in Kailua right when you get into Kailua it's kind of like Kalapawai Cafe and KFC I, I hate that that's a marking point um but <laughs> Uh, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu place that's on, uh, I'm going, uh, 35 Kainehe Street, 35 Kainehe Street. So we're right off of the corner, kind of by Chad Lou's and Olive uh, Boutique in Harbor, Hawaii. So we're right over there. Um, and like I said, we'll try to be opening end of May. And um, I wanted to do this just awesome opening, but it's definitely not going to be that. So it'll probably be a soft opening. And who knows, maybe we'll get to do something in like a year, you know, I don't even know how rules will be to have people in the store. So still trying to like navigate that, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to yeah, so, some time for people to ask questions too. Yeah, um, definitely, definitely. Cool. So if anyone has questions for Lori, 
Um, she's building out this amazing system and, I, and I've always thought that people just need better options, you know, like once someone's ready to go on a zero waste journey or plastic free journey. So it's great to see all these options popping up over the last several years and it's definitely become a hot issue, popular, um, popular thing for people to look, look for solutions for. So thank you for creating that and putting all your sweat and tears into such a great project. Yeah. Yeah, and if there's any questions, will you read them to me? Because I'm having yeah. a little difficulty. On I will, yeah. So feel free to unmute yourself and um, open up your video for anyone who wants to ask questions live, or I'll read them off from the chat. So I'll, we'll give um, time for, for a handful of questions here. And they can also be for um, Chelsea and Scott, and they don't necessarily have to be questions. If there's things that you want to share, things that you know about, um, or just discussion that you want to have, just open, open forum. This is my classic webinar teacher teacher silence. Yeah. <laughs> Questions, comments. Everyone's muted, so you have to manually unmute yourself. You can hit star six if you're on the phone, or just hit the mute button in the corner if you're on your computer. Okay, Anna Grace, I was just wondering what you best recommend when wanting to transition in zero waste. Like, where would you recommend starting? So maybe share, yeah, some first steps for people who are starting out. Um, something I yeah, asked so in my last I always, recommend, I always recommend taking it like one step at a time and really not trying to like overwhelm yourself with a million different things. I kind of like to see where are you producing the most waste in your life? You know, where could you really make the biggest impact first and kind of evaluating that and really taking it one step at a time. On Protea's website, we do have a blog series where it's eliminating one or incorporating one zero waste item into your life a month. And so we talk about each item and how to incorporate that. So it's a very good blog to follow along. My girl Amy's writing them and just killing it. So I highly recommend going there. For me, it was unpaper towels because that was just a given, but Definitely one, one step at a time. Awesome. I know for, um, for me, my first few things were plastic forks and plastic water mm -hmm. bottles. So that's just mm -hmm. what I was using a lot of when I was in college. And when I did my first beach cleanup, that's what I saw the most of. So I think it's really looking at what you're using, what you're throwing out. Maybe you're already past that stage, or maybe you're right there. Um, or maybe you're, you need to work mm -hmm. on your plastic bags when you get produce. So whatever it is that is relevant for you in your moment, I think it's different for everyone. Um, so just being cognizant of what you're throwing away and what you're using on a regular basis, that's unnecessary. Um, but yeah, great question. There's a lot of great books on that too, and a great time to read books. So um, look into some yeah. zero waste living books out there in the world. Another question, do, you, do the containers that we bring into the store have to be glass or aluminum? No, no, I, I highly recommend you to, to take what you have at home first and clean them out. I've already started collecting a million bo bottles for y'all of my own personal use of laundry detergent dish soap, so I'm gonna provide a area as well, but I highly recommend taking the containers that you have. They're great containers. They all have like solid pumps, hardcore plastic, so you can bring in any kind of container. I just, I would like, they would, it would be nice for them to be clean. <laughs> And there will be containers if you don't if you don't have anything there. Love that. Awesome. Any other questions, comments, stories for Lori, Scott, Chelsea? What has been the most rewarding part about opening your biz, Lori? From Kiana. Oh man. Um, I'm just, I'm just stoked to see all the people excited for it. Um, I've had like nonstop messages of people really ready to refill their products. And that just makes me so excited. Like I'm so, so stoked to see all the bottles that we're going to be saving and um, just seeing the community super stoked on it as well. It was definitely scary doing this and thinking, are people really going to show up? Are they going to clean their bottles? Are they going to want to come in, pump the bottles themselves? You lose a convenience factor there. So seeing everyone's, um, excitement has been awesome and I've made so many amazing connections already. So I'm just, I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah, I feel very lucky. 
Yeah. I mean, it's a, I mean, it's awesome to be the first to do something. So I love that. And I, I love that you had the courage to take that first step. Um, Allison from Down to Earth. Hi, Allison. Allison is um, an awesome leader at Down to Earth. So she's asking how we see the pandemic changing the zero waste effort. There's a lot of moves to bring back single use plastic in the name of preventing germ spreading. How do you see that the current world crisis um, how do you see this world crisis affecting your business and zero waste efforts in general? So I was going to mention that really quick. Um, you know, during these hard these times, it's really hard to be zero waste. You can't use your own reusable bags at the store. You can't use your own coffee cups. There's a lot of medical supplies being used. You're seeing all this waste being produced, and it's kind of hard. And you have to understand that the bigger picture right now is saving lives and moving on from this virus. And I think that definitely takes number one, and, and so those are the things we can't change and we have no control over, but we do have a lot of things that we can change and we do have control over. So it's really looking at your life and saying, what can I control and reduce my, my plastic in? And that's, you know, reducing your food waste, repairing things at home, supporting local businesses. I just, there are areas you can't control and it's really trying to, you know, balance it out. And then it's also balancing it out in the sense that, you know, the environment is breathing, um, places are, you know, recovering from all of us. So I think it, it's definitely a balance, but I think that we will get back to where we were, but that's not the focus right now. So really just, you know, taking control of what you can change. I guess I'd chime in that I, I think um, the, the folks that are committed to zero waste are committed to zero waste. I think a lot of people join this train and are on it and are, are gonna do it and get smarter as this challenge has presented itself. We, um, you know, we're taking extra steps, extra precautions to make sure things are sterile before they go out. And these are good practices that our company will continue to use going forward. So I think, honestly, fire testing the zero waste movement is a good thing. It'll continue to make yeah. it stronger and stronger. Um, it will adapt in many ways. <clears throat> and hopefully in a year, COVID will be a distant memory. The whole stay at home thing will be a distant memory. People will be back to normal. And as Lori said, there are environmental benefits to what's going on right now. There are, you know, probably like uh, challenges around like single use plastics becoming uh, kind of more prevalent a little bit, but it, you know, it's a, it's a balance. Um, but I, I do think that as an industry, um, we are strong, uh, customers are committed and we will can just continue to get better and better. And if we didn't have this challenge come up, this might not be something that we saw coming and it might have challenged us in two years. So who knows? Nice. I also want to add that Lauren Singer, who's very famous for being the zero waste girl um, who saved all her trash in a mason jar for like a few years, she had a, um, a post that was basically admitting that she had bought all these single use items for the pandemic. Like, so she had all this like organic canned food and she basically showed a picture of her pantry and said, look, this is one time when zero waste is like not my number one priority. And it's the only time I'm not able to save my trash in a mason jar. And that's okay, because it's an unprecedented moment. Um, but of course, she's still able to do it in all these ways. But when it came to like food, for example, is where um, she made a little bit of a compromise. And, you know, I think that's really important to just recognize that this moment is unique. Um, but that it is completely unacceptable for the industry to try to leverage the pandemic as a way to spread propaganda that plastic is somehow the best material for virus prevention, which is just completely unfounded and not backed up by science. And in fact, the one, the one main study that everyone references actually shows that plastic can hold the virus for much longer than other materials. Mm -hmm. um, so, while yes, maybe using reusables that you bring from home into a restaurant might pose more risk, um, reusables at home are totally fine. Just wash your bags, wash your things. And um, if you have to resort to a disposable, you can still use paper and compostable and that's totally safe, just as safe as plastic, if not maybe even more. So there's, it's dangerous that a lot of country, um, counties and states are rolling back environmental regulations like the plastic bag bans mm -hmm. and other bans that activists have worked for over 10 years on. So we're definitely against that, but we don't see that happening in Hawaii quite yet, but we definitely want to share opposition for that kind of effort being um, inappropriately pushed by the industry. Yeah. Okay, cool. Any last questions or comments to share?
All right. Okay. So if um, Scott, Chelsea, Laura, if you guys want to share last thoughts, how people can find you, that would be great. Okay, I'll go. Um, yeah, so you can find us on Instagram, Protea Zero Waste, and on our website, ProteaZeroWaste.com, and subscribe for email updates. We have an awesome thing we're gifting out tomorrow in honor of Earth Week, so sign up and you'll receive it in your email. Awesome. Thanks, Lori. Scott, Chelsea? Yes, for Pono Home Essentials, you can go to PonoHomeEssentials.com. I'm typing it in the chat.